from the past provide a map for us, remind us of landmarks and perhaps pitfalls, and assure us that the path has been traversed before and that we can, with them, move on into the future. The Talmud instructs that when we teach our sons, we teach our sons' sons. And we really do have a generational perspective. We're not just looking for our children or for our grandchildren, but we're looking for the next 500 years should the Lord tarry. And it's exciting to be a part of that. There's also a great obligation that we believe. We've received something, and now we need to turn and pass it on. And so at Forum Deo Academy, um, we're endeavoring to do that very thing. So we would um, speak to you that ours is a vigorous classical education. And we would look at that word vigorous and define it as one that is precise and formal. A vigorous classical education is one that begins in wonder the amazing things that God has done and instructs over time aiming toward wisdom. We want our children and our grandchildren, we want ourselves to grow in wisdom and understanding God. In a vigorous classical education, students learn to listen, to read, to write, to speak, to understand, and to think. Students learn to reckon, to measure, and to manipulate matter. They learn quantity and motion in order to predict, to produce, and to exchange. And so as we look at the fact that a liberal arts education spans the whole life, as we work together, you and your children will learn what is meant by the soul, by the state, by God, beauty, truth, and goodness. So looking at that vigorous and defining it as precise and formal, we would remind you that this has been the tradition of the West. Chronological and ordered, not haphazard or piecemeal, at Forum Deo Academy from poetry to physics, from recitation to rhetoric, students will learn line upon line, precept upon precept. Principles are taught, they're reinforced, and they're applied <coughs> chronologically. It's amazing what the mind can learn and begin to connect together. We would define classical as timeless and enduring. This is a methodology that has spanned 1,300 years. It's nothing new, it's nothing unusual. We become acquainted with the masterpieces of our tradition, and we learn to pass those on to our students. Um, just as um, those behind us who came in before us learned and had their lessons in grammar, in logic, and in rhetoric. So students at Corum Deo Academy. This is a methodology that has historical ballast. It worked, produced some of the brightest minds ever. And we're endeavoring uh, to do that again. It's no easier nor harder than ever before. It's always been a challenge. And yet, there is this weight and this responsibility and the obligation to instill into our children the rich, rich heritage that's been given to us. Thomas Jefferson bemoaned the fact that after the Revolutionary War, kids just didn't read good books anymore. How funny is that? Because we might say that very same thing today. Oh, why don't you read the good books anymore? A wonderful, wonderful legacy to take advantage of. And it move, will move through a specific number of tools that have been taught forever. Aristosthenes and Blaise Pascal and Dorothy Sayers all have their lessons at the grammar level, at the logic level. And so do our students. It will as well instill within the traveler valued ideals that we pass on to them. Students will learn and be able to recall amazing stories of people from the past. Those of brave Dan Daniel and Jaya, of wise Aristosthenes, of handicapped Demosthenes. He stuttered. They said, you will never be a rhetor. And he said, and he went down to the seashore and he picked up the well, <coughs> smooth pebbles and he put them in his mouth and he paced back and forth and back and forth, practicing his 
lessons in rhetoric, and he overcame his stuttering. Now, I'm not advising that you do that or your children do that, but how amazing and what a wonderful story of having a problem and overcoming it. Of available Cincinnatus, the farmer turned leader, and when he was done, he said, I'm out of here, I'm going back to farming. Oh, there's a lesson to be learned there. Articulate Dante, observant Galileo, Rage on the Creative J.R.R. Tolkien, perceptive T.S. Eliot, all men and women responsible and doing amazing things in their lifetimes. These ideals guide the liberal arts student who's worked hard, cooperated with the process, and grown to love God as a source of all truth. This prepares students for challenges of tomorrow. Rich and rewarding. That is how we would define curriculum. It's not just books, although we love books. It's everything that encompasses an education. It's sitting with us on our campus two to three days a week and in your homes with you two days a week. It's learning. It's going to museums. It's everything from around the debate table right out onto the soccer pitch. That's curriculum. That's all of the life of the learner. How very exciting. So while we do have scopes and sequences, methods, classroom environment, it does encompass everything. And we try to teach the children that each, each and every aspect matters as they learn to live their life on day out before God and pleasing to Him. So our goal, well, it's not the exhaustive learning of everything, because you have a whole lifetime to do that. But it's learning how to learn, and it is connecting with students, with parents, with educators from centuries past and looking forward to the future. At Cormdale Academy, we endeavor to prepare learners for life. I think it's important uh, to remember that Epictetus, the Greek philosopher, said, be careful to leave your sons well instructed rather than rich, for the hopes of the instructed are better than the wealth of the ignorant. 